Michelle McLeod. So how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. So um, let's talk about some of your work here. Okay. Um, this behind us is a work in progress. And so we can't avoid it. I may as well start with this. Um, it will be a portrait of uh, Princess Diana. I'm using two photographs to photographs to sort of get the catch the image. Huh? Yes, yes. Okay. Catch it just how I want it. Okay. Um, I have three bodies of work. My primary body of work is um, portraiture, historical portraiture, where I try to uh, tell stories about people's lives. Uh, through creating that portrait and particularly I try to offer a different perspective on them other than what uh, maybe what we may know or m might be commonly available in the mm -hmm. mainstream media so I try to offer a different a different look at them mm -hmm. and um, I do an abstract landscape series this is from the abstract landscape series and um, these paintings are largely inspired by Asian art, uh, they're inspired by nature, and they offer an opportunity for me to just explore uh, color and incorporating different mediums. Um, and then I do an African inspired figurative series, and this comes from that group. And I don't do this so much uh, anymore, but um, it's just something that, that I enjoy that also allows me to explore some uh, different different ways of working mm -hmm. um, because I am a, I'm a portrait painter I'm a very uh, fine artist so for me to uh, delve into these other um, ways of working is is a new thing for me mm -hmm. to even do any form of abstract or figurative work it's, it's still new for me I see you got Mr. Paul Robeson up here this is Mr. Paul Robeson from uh, Emperor Jones and uh, this is not a part of my normal portrait series mm -hmm. uh, my regular portrait series is the whole body of work which is constantly in progress and growing and Diana will be a part of that series when she's done. It's called Projects Under Construction. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it really addresses um, what people, who people were, what they were working on, what they were trying to accomplish, and you know, again, hopefully offering a deeper look into that. They were telling their story. Telling their story, mm -hmm. and perhaps parts of it that aren't commonly told. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, Robeson was uh, just something that was that I did did for love. I like, that one. I like that one. I like that one. And now we have the one here, Florence. Ah, this the Supreme piece bag. is called Florence in the Spotlight. Uh huh. Um, for obvious reasons, and uh, Florence, as some of us know, many of us was the founder and the original lead singer of the Supremes. Mm -hmm. So through this painting, I am sort of reimagining what her career might have been mm -hmm. um, had she been allowed to continue on that path. Right. And uh, this is a piece that's very special to me because I'm from Detroit. Oh, you're from Detroit, eh? Yes, I am. I'm from Detroit. Oh. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, growing up, Motown was very prevalent, you know, in the home, in our lives. It was, it was in the air. It was, you know, you lived it, you breathed it. It was just everywhere. So Florence Ballard, the only thing I knew about Florence Ballard growing up was that she was the Supreme that had died. That was all I knew. That's all I remember, yeah. Yeah, I just knew um, that she was the Supreme that had died. Yeah. And, but people spoke of her with, with with such reverie, you know, you could tell that she was really adored, but mm -hmm. that was all people would say, is that yeah. she had died. Wow. So I thought that that was why she wasn't in the group. Yeah. I grew yeah. up my whole life thinking she was replaced because she had died. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it would be years later before I learned, you know, the It's a different story, story. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Just trying to tell a little bit of her yeah. story through this yeah. So I see you have your line of, of uh, jewelry wear. 
yes this is uh, my jewelry handcrafted jewelry I started out at least here in New York uh, making jewelry I did jewelry for about 15 years um, I sold two stores like Macy's and uh, Nordstrom and Cache and uh, worked with showroom representatives here and in Chicago and in Texas so mm -hmm. you know I've had a real operation going mm -hmm. um, but I just kind of decided it was I was ready to, to move that. on mm -hmm. from that but I, I do still create jewelry just mm -hmm. not 16 hours a day yeah, that's a good thing <laughs> that's a good thing yeah. <laughs> so this is it and as long as people continue to um, love it and and wear it and buy it I'll continue to make it Yes, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you. Okay, so you do you book? So then you got a book going on? Yes. Let's I talk have a, touch a little basis on that book there. I know it sounds like I'm doing a lot of things, but I don't do them all at the same time. So let's let's get that clear. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first book, mm -hmm. which is called Manifesting Things. Mm -hmm. It is a semi autobiographical spiritual, uh, philosophical, explores um, different religions and ways of thinking mm -hmm. from all over the world and um, how to apply those things to everyday life. And it's written with women in mind, but uh, lots of people have enjoyed it from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. So that's that, manifesting mm -hmm. things. Manifesting, I like that, okay. Yeah, that, that's my bestseller. Uh, the bestseller, huh? okay. The bestseller. This is uh, my most recent book. This is called 9-11 uh, Voices from the Outsider Media. Mm -hmm. And um, this book I published for the 10th anniversary, anniversary of 9-11. And basically it includes emails that I received from all over the world in the days and weeks following 9-11. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of material from prayers to first-hand accounts to, of course, uh, conspiracy theories, mm. um, jokes, not all in good taste, mm -hmm. um, images, just, it, it really just shows what people were thinking all over the world, primarily people of color, and, and um, thoughts that weren't being seen and aired in mainstream mm -hmm. media. Okay. Okay. So I think it's a um, a very historical text mm -hmm. um, to just give some reference on um, on the feeling that okay. people were experiencing at that time. Okay. I want to thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much for and, having uh, me. You have a nice body of work, I should say. Thank you. Thank okay. you. It's thank growing. you. Thank you. Okay.